is the Aqua Sensory Podcast. I'm your host, Jo Wilson. In this show, you will learn all about sensory harmony in water for babies and the early years. Because when we grow to love, connect and respect water, learning follows naturally. I'm here today with Christian Wilson, the co-founder of Aquasensory, and we'd love to share our experiences, what we are observing in the pool, how we are supporting our swim families, particularly our children. We really love at Aquasensory to promote presence, movements, having a can-do attitude to really understand our children and to provide more curiosity, wonder and awe. But something that we are seeing and just being a lot more sort of curious about is labels. So here's a question for you. Are we really quick to label? Label our children, our parents? Are we responding by changing our programs around these labels too? Well, I think certainly um, we're, we're quick to label just in general, aren't we? Um, I think it's it's difficult because obviously there are lots of challenges for for young children, and there are generally um, certainly different conditions out there. But I feel sometimes we would rather label than almost um, love the children, and I think when I say love, love is like this multi-dimensional uh, element that we we provide as, as as parents and love isn't just about sort of moddy coddling and sort of um, over cuddling our, our children, it's also about building a certain amount of resilience in them it's, it's about sort of showing up and being present and sometimes that can be one of the hardest thing for parents because we live in a society where we're almost on autopilot all of the time and and then we get this uh, this new um, person in our lives that is completely omnipresent they are completely present the whole time and they they take over our entire world and it's very easy to kind of pop a iPad or a, or a screen in front of them to to basically occupy them um, but what they really need is is for us to is to show up for them and to provide that sort of love that resilience and this is what we see in the water as well we see we see that the water um, reveals um, and shows so much because parents have to be present they're actually holding their child in the water so they can't escape they can't occupy mm -hmm. them with a screen you know it's a completely uh, present environment and that's why the water is is so crucial so some of the labels that I hear um, is that you know perhaps even toddlers they get called terrible twos or um, you hear in society you know we want to label parents and, and say oh the helicopter parents you know there isn't a lot of empathy around these words in the pool sometimes we hear parents say oh they've got lazy legs or he's too shy but the problem is is that you know we can be so quick to label and you know sometimes our children you know have got something um, or they're very quick to say oh he doesn't like that particularly um, when it comes to where a skill feels a little bit more challenging like back work but I think if we really under sort of look if we really sort of think the underlying causes why are we so quick to label um, you know, can we have a little bit more caution I think sometimes you know there can be us as adults feeling a little bit uncomfortable or even parents you know with what's happening with their ch child's behavior in front of them um, so there are ways that we can support and help and I love to to deeply listen and to really look at what is happening in front and what what behavior is the child presenting um, let's give an example what we do um, if a child we know has really strong sensory preferences and they like to splash crash go under the water then perhaps let's take their lead to start with we know that child is really trying to regulate themselves um, we could set up a sensory circuit to start with so it's actually providing opportunities 
for them to crash and bang and then uh, that will regulate their nervous system and then they'll be ready to learn rather than creating this sort of blanket blueprint that they all have to do exactly the same so I think if we look underneath the labels and we're not too quick to label that can really help um, another common one is you know and what you were saying Christian about the screens and occupying is he's bored or she's bored yeah I think um, to say that you know and we get it don't we in lessons that a two-year-old's bored they're just they don't have the capacity for that because they're so present and I think this is what we forget you know when when you are present you're not you're not trying to be entertained yeah children are the world of a child is so fascinating and so wondrous that they they really do not get bored you know every minute of the day is, is a new is a new discovery a new awakening and it's it's for us not to sort of um construct construct this environment around them where we're sort of blocking them in with words and labels like i say so that they feel like they can't explore and they can't feel that creativity coming through because often through um play and discovery we have to take a certain amount of risk i remember when i was young we used to climb trees we used to do all sorts that you probably wouldn't want to do today as children because it would be deemed it would be deemed far too dangerous and far too crazy but when we were kids you know that's how we learned you know rolling down hills climbing up trees all sorts of things that we used to get up to um but the thing is that for a child to discover the world around them they do need to press up against those those boundaries of their sort of um what they might feel is is like a fear or something or they're not too certain about something by going beyond that and discovering the world around them that's that's where they build up that resilience and i feel we're in danger at the moment of perhaps being way too cautious too soon um trying to say to children oh no you won't like that or oh no we he doesn't like that or no we're not going to give that a try etc and uh yeah we're, we're we're basically creating very sensitive children because they're not able to sort of um test those sort of boundaries of their own awareness and their own sort of um like apprehensions mm. about things so they're not yeah. experiencing the world to the to the full yeah um, i think it's definitely a balance i think we've got to recognize that some children are more sensitive than others and that can be their superpower and we can really provide the tools for them but as you say by taking away opportunities then actually we aren't really expanding and stretching their skills and providing more resilience so yeah. it's definitely definitely a balance i think we've seen it certainly when we've done uh theme lessons like superhero week um even with you know we're doing the it's halloween at the moment so we're doing like our spectaculars etc when we create an environment that's that's fun for for the child they naturally get over those apprehensions and sometimes we find that the most nervous child really blossoms in those lessons mm. and it's it's amazing to see and it just goes to prove that just with a little bit of encouragement they can really get past that point so i i agree that some children are more sensitive than others but that's that's not to shy away from yeah, trying take... to progress the, pr progress them on yeah. and i think what we tend to do is go oh they're they're a bit sensitive so we're going to pull back even yeah. further yeah. and i think that's the risk that we have and going back to what I was saying about love, that that isn't that isn't necessarily um, a form of love. That's a form of control, and we've got to be really careful when we when we love something. We've got to be able to set it free and to and to give it the opportunity to experience life in in all its dimensions. Mm. Yeah, I think opportunity is such a key word. It's providing the brain and body with exposure and opportunity. As you say, sometimes we're oversensitive and we can take away and that's not providing that opportunity and not showing up really, really fully ourselves and, you know, allowing the children to fully express themselves in, in their way. Um, we are living in an autopilot uh life and I think it's how we now navigate that because the brain and body learns from environment it learns from us it learns from mirroring and 
I think we have a duty to really understand ourselves and to regulate our nervous systems first because we, our children and our young children, our babies co-regulate from us. So I love in the pool to have those mindful moments to breathe together, to really connect and feel the water. And I often use the expression, take a breath in a moment when we feel relaxed, our little ones feel relaxed too. And you can really visibly see that real let go, that moment that everybody then starts to be a little bit more in tune together, a tune in to uh, their nervous systems because actually our nervous system is a blueprint to our children's and sometimes we we forget that we forget our internal regulation Mm. i think um when we first set about bringing more sensory um elements into the water with aqua century the reason we were so passionate about it was because we felt at the time and this is going back some 10 years now so shows how the world has changed definitely um we felt at the time it was perhaps the last environment left where we could provide that sort of soul focus, that soul presence where screens wouldn't be a factor, where parents would have to be present with their children, where we could explore all the senses, that movement could be totally free. And I think um, we just want to champion that further, really, and just and just really sort of provide that. So wherever we feel that perhaps um, parents are feeling quite nervous, um, and sort of pulling back that's where we want to bring in those tools and really help them to to feel that sort of freedom in the water because that's what it's that's what it's yeah all about. it's providing empathy and compassion and support as well I think support is a really big word and to really understand our, our, our swim families because our world isn't changing in a way that it is supporting children's development it's actually pulling away from children's development when we look at what is needed for a healthy child to thrive is actually really simple, but we're, we're diluting. So when we look at the pool, it's actually providing all the elements of an amazing foundation for child development um, naturally. And that can be really simple things like eye contact, as you say, presence, co-regulation, skin to skin, to skin voice. Voice is hugely important. Mm. How, what words are we choosing? And as you say, love, nurturing our children. It's not always the physical presence, but it's the emotional um, love that we give and provide our our children too. It's also about, and I know we we spoke about this before, but one of the sort of key elements that underpins Aquacentry, which we always talked about in the early days, um, was play. And when we say play, we also mean fun as well because children learn through play and they learn through things that are fun. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but so often we can take things way too seriously Mm. and without realising it, our faces show that sort of seriousness, a bit of fear, a bit of apprehension. So it's just about helping that child really feel safe so that they can play and feel that play is okay as well it's all right to have fun it's all right to laugh it's all right to splash around yeah and and discover the water because what you're actually doing is building confidence through that that's the best way to build confidence is is through play and through fun and through laughter they really do feel safe and secure and i just feel perhaps our society needs that more than ever yeah more Um, joy more freedom more fun yeah we're sort of getting closed in by seriousness all around us at the moment you know everything feels doom and gloom and for a child no they don't they don't share that they they want to experience fun they want to experience play yeah Yeah, I think you're right I sometimes have a class and I can almost feel energetically I'm being judged like what are we doing are we we're not learning this is this is where we just play in whereas actually what we're really really doing is exploring we're exploring our bodies can they twist can they turn can we go above over under can we roll and that to me is the absolute dynamics of movement and what we're doing is providing not just freedom of movement in the pool but something that is so important outside the pool as well so if you ever have a parent or a baby and you're holding them really closely in the water and allowing them to freely move 
it's not nothing. Actually, that pause, that silent time is everything. I absolutely love when babies play with their little fingers and their toes and they're really exploring in the water. And rather than just rushing on, getting a toy and a resource, um, it is sometimes those those small moments, mindful moments that that mean so much. Yeah, definitely. I think you're right. It's those it's the small little things that make all the difference. Um, we've always had an element of play. Um, I I used to call it sugar coated learning in our older levels for our swim academy levels, sort of four plus, um, where we would always start with something quite fun and end with something quite fun. And I remember back in the early days where parents had come from more traditional swim lessons where it's like swim back and forth yeah front and back and that was it that they were like well what are they actually learning here why they're you know um pl- kicking on like long woggles like broomsticks and things like that but it was that fun element they were learning balance they were learning to stretch out they were learning to get their face in the water um and all those kind of all those kind of factors so it's not it's not always the traditional skills that we're we're thinking about it's also the emotional skills that we're trying to build within children um things that we can't even see um that's what we're trying to build within children so it's the invisible things like i said like confidence Mm. like that resilience self-esteem yeah like that fun and awareness of of their different like proprioception the different body parts by feeling their toes by feeling the water on their fingers they're learning where each part of their body is and this is really important for obviously learning to swim and and self-awareness so yeah there there is a lot of emphasis on the higher learning skills um traditional skills and what we sometimes forget is the foundation skills so you know that that's almost like the top or the roof of the house or the top of the tree it's actually the things that you can't see underground so that's why i love like the tree analogy let's have a real look at the roots so aquasensory actually provides the roots the senses of the roots the child development ingredients of the roots um, and then you're going to be providing the swim skills um for for the for the trunk and then what you then see bloom and the leaves but that's the very very you know higher skills at the top you must get really strong roots for us as a society and children to be able to thrive in and out of the pool as well yeah no totally and like you said trees are very good analogy um I often refer to that that the only way to build a strong tree is is through um storms so learning to a tree actually it's been proven grows deeper root systems when it's facing more of a uh a westerly front in this country it builds deeper roots and it builds a, a, a thicker trunk faster so it becomes stronger quicker because it's it's having to weather those storms and i think that's the same for our child development as well if you think of them like in terms of their growth in terms of making them resilient so that they can weather those those storms that life will inevitably um put their way um they will just grow stronger and stronger and the water is the best place to experience that you know those dynamic movements that they can do whether it's coming in off the raft or or swimming on their back front etc little dips all those sort of things are weathering building those strong root systems for that for that child going forward Mm, perfectly so if we uh, really think about three things three little takeaways today Um, it's modeling it's mirroring it's really regulating our system so we're providing a strong base for our parents turning off tech um, and you know tuning in um, and being there showing up as well and one of the books that I, I absolutely love is called The Power of Showing Up and it's by Danielle Daniel Siegel and Tina Bryson and there's five things that they say safe seen soothed and secure so that's really perfect and that's something that we can really champion and bring in the water as well yeah definitely no that is a great book and uh yeah definitely worth a read great so we hope you've had a few takeaways from today and we would love to hear your thoughts as well love not label 
what are you hearing in the pool? Are we as a society and as swim teachers quick to label? How can we really support to tune in, to be there, to have a really compassionate society and to also champion swimming, champion water because we together are doing such a great job. Thank you for listening to the Aqua Sensory Way. It's so nice to have you here tuning in today. Let's connect again soon. I'd love you to find out more about creating sensory harmony in water. Come and join us on our socials and in our community Facebook group, Aqua Sensory Connections.